Hello, this is a walkthrough video for the Advanced Network Planner Tool, or ANP, developed by Facebook Connectivity. The ANP tool allows you to design Cambium Outdoor 60 GHz wireless networks with built-in Teragraph mesh technology. I'll share my contact information at the end of the walkthrough for any follow-up questions or access requests. Let's start with the home page screen. As you first log in, you will see all the folders of plans you have already created. Obviously, when you first gain access, there will be no projects listed. To create a folder, click the Add Folder button and enter a name and description of your design. Then select Urban for the planner technology. Once the folder has been created, you can then click on the Add Plan button, name your plan, and select End-to-End -end Planner using GeoTIFF files for the template. Next, you'll see a screen where you will enter your project information. The boundary polygon is the area of which you want to cover in your design. This file can be created in Google Earth. Once we have Google Earth open, we select the Add Polygon button on the top menu. Then simply click and drag the area in which you want to cover. Then select OK and right click on the left menu, your polygon. Select Save Place As and name your boundary file. Next, I'll enter the boundary file I just created. Now you need to add your DSM and DTM files. We recommend you get this information from the National Maps website. I have mine, so let's go ahead and continue. In the next section, detect sites on buildings. We'll enter in the maximum number of CN or customer node sites per building. In our design, we're providing internet to houses in a neighborhood, so we know we have one CN site per building. We also know our maximum line of sight distance is 180 meters, and we'll keep the default of minimum line of sight and mounting height above rooftops. Next, we'll move to the Analyze Line of Sight section. You will need a site list here to tell the tool where each CN customer node and DN distribution node are located. To get this site list, we will use Link Planner and Google Earth. In our Link Planner program, we have already configured the project. Simply click the Google Earth icon on the top menu bar. Then go into Google Earth to see your project populated. The next step is to create three new folders, CN, DN, and POP. Once those folders are created, drop your subscriber sites folder down and select all your subscriber sites. Drag those into the CN folder now go into your network sites. Here you'll have both your POP or fiber sites plus your DN sites. Add all of these to the appropriate locations. Now you can delete all the other folders. Now right click on your project folder and select save place as. Now name this as your site list. Now that we have a site list, we can add it to our project. We're going to leave the DN, CN and pop height on pole at default settings. The reason for this is you should be using Link Planner to determine the height above the building. Make sure that you're doing height above building instead of height above ground as this will affect your project. The next section is specify cost capacity and demand dimensioning parameters. Here you want to select the appropriate amount of bandwidth per subscriber your oversubscription factor, we're going to go with two, you can go up to three, and your fiber capacity. Next, we'll enter our site cost information. For our CN site cost, 
it is $500. For our DN site cost, $1,200. And we'll leave the default of $1,500 for a fiber site, but obviously you can make it whatever your site costs are. Then we'll move into on a per radio cost basis. For our CN site, it's $250. For our DN site, it's $600. We need to change the number of DN radios per site to two, as the V5000 has 240 degree antennas. Then we'll click Show Advanced Options. From here, we enter our AP specific information. This information is easily attained by request with our ANP training PowerPoint, which gives you all the information that you would require inside the tool. We know our frequency is 60480 for what we're doing. Our noise figure is 10. Our thermal noise power is negative 81. Now we need to know what our rain loss or rain rate is for the project. Our rain rate can be acquired through our Link Planner project by going to the project and clicking the report button. Once the report has been generated, you can scroll down to the area that says rain rate. We know ours is 54.56 millimeters per hour. Again, going to our A&P tool training PowerPoint, we can select the rain loss tab. We can see at our 0 0.01 availability that we're between 42 and 60. We go to our other graph and see between 40 and 60. So we're somewhere about 17 dB. Once we have that information, we enter it into our rain loss. Now we'll enter our antenna specific information. This can be provided upon request as well. Enter the relevant information, which again can be gained on the AMP training PowerPoint. Now we'll enter our CN antenna information as well. Once that's complete, we can move on to the optimize section. Here, we need to specify a budget for this project, we're doing 125,000. Our max number of hops, which for us is 15. Our maximum DN to DN radio connection, we want to leave at two, thus allowing us 13 DN to CN radio connections. The rest of the information below and in the next section can be left as default. We then want to select save and then launch. Depending on the size of your project, this process can take 30 minutes to many hours. Now that we've launched the project, I'll show you the same project that I did previously so we don't need to wait on all the numbers to crunch. At first glance, the tool will show you all the connections it thinks it can make, but the important information is to the right under the Output Assets files. You're going to want to click on the download for the KML and the text file. First, we'll look at the KML file. This opens in Google Earth and will show you all the possible or selected connections. We'll go under links and we'll remove the candidates. So now we're looking at just the proposed sites that the tool says are the best links to provide the correct amount of data. Next, we'll look at the text file. This text file gives us a lot of information. But the important things to know straight off are the number of active, connectable, and total candidates. So you can see we can get all of the connections that we wanted and the amount that the project is going to cost. So we added 125000 in the beginning, but we see that it still went lower and said we can do this project for $91,950. As promised, here's my contact information. Please feel free to email me with any questions or for document requests. And as always, thank you for watching.